Hello and welcome to another edition of Political Paradigm. I am Terry Ikumi. The Kogi State Governorship election is one of the elections that will take place on 11th of November 2023, just about three months away. We've been speaking with the candidate in that election. Today I speak with Honorable Liki Abejide, who is a member of the African Democratic Congress running for Governor of Kogi State on, the, on that platform. Honorable, welcome to Political Paradigm. Thank you for having me. It's nice to see you again. I see that your campaign is already in full swing and for you there's no slowing down. How have you found campaign so far? Thank you so much. Campaign is always very stressful, but just for a time. Well, we have started the beat in a full bloom. We are going full blasting as from next week. Well, I'm curious. I know that as a member of the House of Representatives, you've experienced defections on the floor mainly to opposition, to, main, to the ruling party, and your, part, your state is under the control of the APC. Uh, why have you stayed with the ADC? Because I know that there have been pressure to get you to join either the APC what? or the PDP. So why have you stayed with the ADC? And you've been the only lawmaker on the platform of the ADC. I'm not the only lawmaker now. That was then. But we are two. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I'm talking about how long. How long, long I've stayed. Yeah, well, um, my origin is in APC. And if you see my relationship here at the top, is APC people that are really, even at home. Majority of my supporters are APC because I was the leader of APC in my site. It was as a result of what happened in 2015. After we struggled with uh, late Prince Audu, our leader, and, and with James Abedon Faleke, and we won PDP. We're the one that chased PDP out of the state. And we were able to win that election. Unfortunately, we lost our leader. He died in the process of announcement of results. And our expectation was that the leadership of APC then, uh, not this current one, then, headed by. Uh, this Papa Oyego, we were expecting that at least the running mate to inherit the vote, not somebody who did not participate in the election, who did not even work with us, who worked with the PDP, then that's the current governor. And he cannot swear with his life that he didn't work with the PDP. He worked with the PDP against us. But we won that election, and somebody who worked against us did not give him the mandate, and this is what led to my exit. And I remain there. Why I have not turned to come to APC is as a result of the governor himself. The 2023 election, during the time of the primary, or before the primary, the build up to that election, I was approached by some governors that I helped this governor, I assisted him during his second time, that it is time for me to return to my home, which is APC. And I agreed. They arranged a meeting. These governors arranged a meeting. If you want me to mention the name, I can mention the oh, name. Please go ahead. Governor of Jigawa State, Governor of Kebi State, they are both ministers now. Even Governor of Kaduna State, they all made a series of efforts for me to have a meeting with the current government. But what they are saying that they want us to have an agreement. They told the national chairman then, that is uh, Senator Adamu now, former, that they want us to have an agreement so that I'm already a member of House of Rep, seated. So they want us to have an agreement that um, I will get my ticket to wherever I want. But the governor did not honor the agreement. He didn't even honor the meeting. He didn't attend anyone. His own party chairman in the state, Dollar is his name, approached me three times. He came here three times. And we had so, so very fruitful meetings. And they told me that, OK, by 12 o'clock, so so day, they will call me. And I said, I will be in the chamber. They said, I should please come out so that they can get me. When it was that 12, I went out. And I didn't hear from them. I called them. Because my aim is to meet with the governor, to sit down with him, 
They said they have not been able to book the appointment. So it was, it was the, his fault that they thought, they don't know my value. But when you come to my constituency, you know my value, even beyond. After that one time that the governor failed to attend the meeting, have there been other attempts to shuttle the Even myself, I reached out to him severally. He refused to pick up. Well, you had a meeting with him, I think, a, a couple of years ago. That was uh, 2020. Yes. It's long time. I'm talking of when the election of 2023 was approaching, when they were looking for how we can collapse structures together. But you have no personal uh, misunderstanding with the governor, do you? Or is it I just I don't have politics? personal misunderstanding with him. But I just need, you know, his good governance, which is not there. We'll talk about that. You talked about uh, Ihaya Bello emerging. Uh, after the court judgment following the death of Prince Aoudou. And you also talked about how that affected the APC. Perhaps you could explain a little further uh, about how the death of Prince Aoudou affected the APC in Kogi State and what uh, perhaps Yaya, Yaya Bello's emergence did for or against the party. His death threw the state backward. If Prince Aoudou had not died, if you look at this structure, you can see the legacy structure you can see on ground. It's his handwork. If he had not died, I remember he went to Kano to understudy Kano State, how the former governor, Governor Kunkusu, Rabbi Kunkusu, was able to develop Kano and turn Kano around. And he was determined to do the same in the States. If you go to Kano before, you cannot see any flyover, one single one. But now, during Konkoso time, Kano was like Lagos. It becomes so many flowers, you see, you know, all those areas that used to have traffic jam, you reduce them, he used flyover to solve the problem, even like Abuja here. If you go to Kano, you know what I'm saying. And he went and understood all those things. And he brought us together as one, as a leader. And all of us were happy to be in APC. But his death scattered us. Everybody went his way. Even on the Valley, we wouldn't have gone back to Lagos. But, but how is APC still? No, you, in you, power? You, your question has not been answered totally. You ask how the <laughs> emergence affected the APC. Affected. Yeah. His emergence scattered the, 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 the party, make the party unpopular in the state. So APC is unpopular in Kogi State, APC is unpopular despite in Kogi being State. in power since uh, for it eight years. It has been in power for all these years. APC is unpopular in the state. And it's because of the performance of the governor and those people around him. The way he handled people, he doesn't consider anybody to be anybody. To be even, no matter how old you are, he doesn't look at that. The traditional institutions so for most under him. Look so, at the uh, we know you have a brother ninety five years old. See, my holy book tells me, you see, honor your father and your mother so that it shall be well with thee. Not necessarily to be your biological mother. It has to be somebody who can give birth to you. And that is what I expect from anybody, no matter see power in the next two less than two months, the will not be a governor again. Immediately after the election his his power is gone. So why don't you do things that outlive us, give us a good legacy? So when he came, instead of looking for us, who did the job that makes Aldo to win, instead they started persecuting us. They made sure they threw us out. They don't even want to hear anything. Else. This current president, President Bala Ahmed Tunubu, you know, you know, because of Faleke now, all of us, we are together with this current president. We have been his boys. He didn't want to hear anything relating to him. So they make sure they fence us out. When they call the APC meeting, we will not be called. Anything they do, they will not invite us. They say we are tenable people. That is how they threw us out. And so instead of us to scatter like sheep without shepherd, uh, arrangement was made that, OK, we should gather our people into one small party so that they will not scatter. So when it is time, for us to return to our base, we go there together. So you will return to the APC at some point, that's what you're saying? Well, no, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I, I'm not an enemy of APC, that's what I'm telling you. No, you're an ADC. I'm member. an ADC, but majority of my supporters are APC. are APC. And you say that your spirit and soul 
still lies with the APC. Because all my friends are there. It's not lying with there. So will See, you go to the APC at some point? Will you return? You say? Will you re are you considering returning to the APC? Nothing is impossible in politics. Mm. Nothing is impossible in politics. Even though if I go to APC tomorrow, APC is my home. They cannot say I'm a stranger there. It's my uh, home. Well, when we talk about the popularity of the APC, I know that uh, there are those who opposition parties who believe that the election in Kogi State in uh, 2020 was um, not fairly won. 2029? I mean 2019. Well, so yeah, 2019 mm. governorship election. There are those who believe that it wasn't fair, uh, especially opposition parties. But then many say that if the APC indeed was not popular, would it not have been difficult to win that election despite the irregularities that, uh, that were observed in that election? You know what happened that year? I told you. I even went to the governor. I, I can remember vividly November 2nd. Hmm? November 2nd, 2020. I went to his house. And I asked him, and I told him, I said, Do you know why you won Kogi West? He said, No. I said, It's because the people of Kogi West want. I'm on television. You can hear this. Want the power to be shifted to Kogi West after you. He won that election because the people of Kogi West gave him the votes. It's not about the popularity that made him to win. It's just because some part of the state, like the Kogi West Central District, believe that we should support him in order for the power to shift to the West. So the agreement is for power to shift to the West? Yes. The agreement is that. See. When was this agreement reached? Agreement has been reached right from when Aldo was there and Between campaign. who and who? With, with, with the, within the two central districts. There's something they call West, I mean, Central West Coalition. That is Kogi Central and Kogi West Coalition. So there was an agreement. Even this current government, when he was looking for how to get the primary ticket, he's aware of, that, of this coalition. He's aware of this arrangement. And let me even tell you, recently, the president granted us audience. The Kogi West Elders Forum, Okun Development Association, and Okun Think Tank. I facilitated it, and we went to the villa. The president said in his speech that it's much away. There's an agreement of our rotation in Kogi State. If you look at other, other states in, in Kogi Central, and um, North Central, the other state in North Central, it's only Kogi and Bini that have problem. If you go to Quara, they have zone A, zone B, zone C. If you go to Plato, they have zone A, zone B, zone C. That's is, is, in Niger State. They have zone A, zone B, zone C. Nobody will go to your zone when it is not your turn. That's how it's supposed to be in Kogi State. As we uh, talk about the build-up to the election now, there are some concerns as to whether or not every political party is you know, presented with a level playing field. How's the atmosphere for you as you prepare for, as you campaign in Kogi State? Do you feel like it's a level playing field for you as uh, opposition? The governor doesn't want to allow that. He's trying to work against democracy. He's trying to ensure there is chaos because recently his people went and started destroying my people. Even in my own federal constituency, I've written a petition against I've written petitions against them. And very soon they will hear from the high authority, even the, beyond what they think. Because this is a democracy, there's freedom of association, there's freedom of movement, there's freedom of speech. You cannot say because you are governor too. I'm telling you now. Now, by November 12th, I believe will not be a governor. It will be a lame dog governor. Because by then, all his power is gone. Every alleged will be to whoever wins the election. So that is how the power is. Power is very transient. So whatever he does now, he has to be very careful. He said we should pay $5 million. I went to pay my $5 million. I gave it to the party chairman. $5 million for for the billboard, that you have to pay five million. The chairman went there to pay, chairman of a party in the state, Honorable John Nandaji, went to pay. And then when he got there, 
they say you should hold on. That he, he, they we they are sent to adjust some things. He went there for almost one two weeks. So they said they have not been able to finish arranging what they are arranging. So I said, okay, give them the money. But if they don't take hold it, it means we have fulfilled all righteousness. I put my big board everywhere. Because you asked me to pay and the money is there. Then they said there is a cost of fee of 50 million. Against electoral acts. I don't know where a state law will supersede that of federal law. I don't know who are the, his advisors that you say a cost of fee for a billboard is 50 million naira. I'm saying this for the president to hear. This is what we're having in the state. It's never done anywhere. And he has forgotten that one day he will leave the seat. And with all this, if a candidate loses, where is he going to hide his face? How is he going to relate with people? If somebody tomorrow now brings a law that he must not come into the state, how is he going to feel? So he will not be, he will be in exile as a former governor. Is he right? We should look at tomorrow. Uh, can the cost of fee, 50 million? May I wait for whoever will bring me cost of you, fee? Uh, one that I will not pay. You are. What I will pay is what he has put in his law. That, that fee of, yes, we can still say 5 million is so much based on the letter act. But since he put it there, we can, we, we, we can pay it. Because even by, by his own standard, House of Rep, it has a certain amount of money to spend. Not to talk of when you are contesting the state, only state election. Then you are paying more than the federal. He needs to be cautioned. Uh, I say that you're worried about a lot of things. Uh, are you worried still about being arrested by the Kogi state government because you have gone to court on this matter? Um, well, he orchestrated it. The governor orchestrated it. What they did is he invited chief magistrates. You know, it's under him. You know, it's under him. And they invited some law enforcement agents. And they what one non entity, I use the word. You see, whatever you sow, you must reap. There's a boy, his name is Kingsley Oga. His people say they don't want him, that his character is that of a traitor. And I said, this guy is suffering. Let us help him. I put him as chairman of the party in my state. And truth, truth and behold, he portrayed that attitude. He started misbehaving. I was not even there when they removed him. I was not aware. They removed him from his ward, removed him from his local government, and the national ratified him. So when they were looking for who to use against me, they started using him as an instrument in the hands of the devil against me. It is, they invited him to that meeting that I threatened him. Why they are saying I'm threatening him is because I was in Lokoja and somebody forwarded a court uh, summon to me. And I saw my name. I see me. I'm a very peaceful person in my life. I'm never going to any court. I've never taken anybody to court. How can somebody put in my name as one of the defenders? And I forwarded to our platform, the campaign platform. I said, see what things lead against me. Me. That he will meet his water look like whatever you sow. I'm going to Galatians 6 7. You are going to reap. He went and reported and started. They asked him to write this and that. And they, they wanted to use the chief magistrate, say, other my arrest. That way I went to the court. That look at what they are doing. Should they think I don't know? You see, I have more people than them. It is them that have enemies because of what they are doing against people in the state. See, Igbo people are very united among us, among the three ethnic groups. If we want to see the most united ethnic group is a bira. But, but, but Yabelo came and scattered this thing. But, but there, there seems to be a problem in Kogi State with regards to the three ethnic groups that you mentioned. And some say that's the reason why Kogi is struggling. This ethnic group doesn't want that ethnic group. They don't want that ethnic group. So despite the perhaps what you would call bad governance, 
they are the seemingly ununited to fight bad governance. No, this time we are united. You know, you don't show your joker to your enemy very early. He will know how to conquer you. So you will see whether we are united or not. Let the election come closer. Let's it is then you will now know who will win. Honorable Abeji Day, uh, let's go to the business of your governorship ambition. You've been a uh, you're a two term member of the House of Representatives. Yes. You have you've been chairman. You're currently chairman of the House Committee on Customs. Former chairman of the House Committee on Customs. You seem to enjoy the 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 support of your people. So anyone would wonder. Not seems. I enjoy the support of Very well then. Anyone would wonder why you would want to leave your comfort zone and go through what you're going through now mm -hmm. to be governor of Kogi State. Why do you want to be governor of Kogi State? Yes, you are very right. I'm very correct. You will see that even at the beginning, I was not prepared to run for the governorship. I was only prepared to support Honorable James Faleke to be the governor. Because under, in, in, under fairness, equity and justice, and uh, with fear of God, the expectation was that after he had below finishes his term, he will call Faliki to come. That, come, I know I inherited your, your votes. What belongs to you, I've eaten it. So please, come and run. That was the expectation of everybody. But you know what they did? When they knew Faleke, so Faleke did not obtain any form. And Faleke didn't take any form. It is his friends in the Kogi State who work with us during all, all the time that went and obtained the form on his behalf. And see that because he knew he should run by force. They want him. And it could have been so easy for APC this time. Oh. If Faleke was... Ah, it could have been like a lesson. No, no party will not be able to contest. Because people like us, all of us, will be in one place. And that's part of that I'm in ADC. We will not be fighting to stand near for him. Because we say, okay, Faleke is wrong. So, but when they knew he would come around, they now brought this system that if your name is not on the... Register of APC in Kogi State, they will screen you out. That was why he didn't participate in that screening exercise. So, when we were looking at his body language, that is the governor, whether he will give the ticket to any of our brothers, at least he has people working with him. He has commissioner from Kogi West, he has people who are in another position in Kogi West, he will, Senator Smart was there. We believe one of them will get this ticket, but they didn't get it. Instead, took it to the central. That was why they now pushed me and said, we are not stupid and we are not slaves, but I should go and obtain form. And what made me also to agree is because the state is in their need of help. Look at the workers, how they are suffering. Go to any local government, you are a journalist, do investigative journalism, send people secretly to all the 21 local government, see which of the Sectoral is functioning. Nobody goes to office anymore because no salary. Those who are getting are getting percentage, 15%, 20%. Then what they get? They are, it's not a, I'm not, see, I'm, I don't support people. And I'm saying the facts. You can verify this fact. Then, in my side, I'm from Yagba Federal Constituency, comprising of three local governments Yagba West, Yagba East, and Mapamuru. Local government. This government has not constructed one single road. Since I came to government, after I paid wife fees for like four years, I called them. I called the Commissioner of Finance. You people should try. I called the Commissioner for Education. I said, you people should try and be paying this thing. I can divide this money to take care of the youth. The youth are almost vacable on the no, no, Sorry, this wife fees you talk about. There, there were reports at some point that the state government had told uh, I think the schools not to accept your yes uh, is that true yeah it was true so they were refusing you they were refusing students you, from accepting your support I will tell you the story I will tell you the story them. in my very constancy it wasn't nobody refused they, the government did not because I have been paying 
for five years, going to six years. So, but when I extended it to Kababunu in Jumu Federal Constituency, that was when the, the Speaker of the State House of Assembly then was contesting for rep, and it's from that Federal Constituency. He couldn't do that, and he went ahead to ensure that the, we should not pay. But I left, since they said we should not pay, I left, I went to my hometown in Alu. So it, it, from Alu. So it wasn't a state government, it was a speaker. Who is the state government? Who is the speaker? Is it not the same? It's the, it's the collaboration <laughs> with, the, with the executive and the legislature in the state now. They are the one. I went to my home in Alu and see a lot of calls from who is who in that very constituency. And people came to meet me in Alu. That's my hometown. And beg and beg that I should come back. That this time, it's not the way I even wanted to pay. That is going to be done in the stadium. Before I got there, the stadium was filled to the brim with the parents, all the parents and students. Something that has never happened. And I paid that day. So now, because that is what, see, our people need just a little help. They will help themselves during the minerals. You, you, you talked about the roads in your constituency that have not been constructed since this administration. And it reminds me that when you met with um, Governor Yahya Bello in 2020, that was one of the reasons why that meeting held. Yes. And you talked about the national budget and putting that into the budget. So was that put into the budget? It was put into the budget. I, will, I met with him. And I told him that I'm struggling to get this road into the budget so that we can be doing it. You know, government does not want to do the whole road one time. We can do it bit by bit. I say I'm standing for, I'm going to start for Momo Kiti. It's a federal road because that is the boundary of Koki State and Ekiti. And he just five minutes to my place. So, and he said, okay, it's even good that the Commission of Finance is on seat, that uh, I should let them know where I start from, so that it will not be a uh, double, uh, double project. I said, okay, sir, I'm starting from Momoke. So that I'll be coming. As I started, I started forwarding the videos, to him, pictures, all the, the, way the, the way the work was progressing, and I was expecting them to start their own. I called them, said Valley. I told them, they said they would do, they would do. They said they put it in the budget. The budget went, one stone was not laid, sand was not dropped. And I called the secretary to the state government, who is also from my place, and I said, Madam, you people put it in your budget performance that you perform 95%. Where your own road, nothing was done. He said that is the 5% that was not done. I said it's a shame. How can you say 5% and it has to be you as a secretary of the state government? See, in the state government arrangement, after the governor, the deputy governor, in the executive, the next person that will pick is the secretary. You are supposed to cover the, your senatorial district, not even only that segment. Nothing was done. As I speak to you, nothing has been done. Any road you see in Yagwa was done by me. Any road you see in that federal consensus was, not, was done by me. Including the local government roads. Was done by my humble self. Nobody, no state government effort. Honorable, let, let's talk about your popularity in Kogi State. Now, I recall that I was speaking with, uh, last week, I was speaking with Senator Dino Melaya, who is running for the same position on the platform of the People's Democratic Party. And he talked about experience and popularity. He believes that he is more experienced, he has more popularity. He talks about being a, how he has run for House of Reps and run for Senate and now Governor. He gives you credit, a second. <laughs> and he believes that he is more popular than you. So in terms of popularity in Kogi State, also considering that uh, both of you are from Okun. Okun. From Okun, yes. Exactly. Okun Yoruba. Who is more popular in Kogi State, considering the concerns of perhaps depletion of votes in Okun, since you're both from the same place? Uh, Senator Dino is my brother. We've been together. And uh, actually, he's famous. 
not popular. There's two different, it's a two different thing. So when you say somebody is popular, it means it's known and it's well loved by his people for what he has done to them. But somebody can be known very well, but may not be loved like that. That's famous. So now, in terms of popularity, uh, he has been to House of Red, truly, yes, once. It was a one time House of Red, but he didn't finish the time. I, I hope you are aware. The, he fought and the, it, the, the, it ended that way. To the end, he was not recalled back. I spent only one time, and even this one time, COVID took away like a year. Then you can just suppose my one time with his own one time. You compare and contrast with the people. Then, in terms of who is more popular in the state, let me tell you, it's not a matter of pride. If I, I, I agreed the way they press on me in local to, to, to and that's another fair constituency to contest for Senate. How will I want the Senate against anybody? That is how popular I am to the people. Why am I popular? When I came to government, I realized that our people are suffering so much. I started with empowerment. I was the first that did empowerment among my colleagues in 2019, December. Then in 2020, because of the COVID, we could not do much, but we still did the empowerment. In 2021, I did a mega empowerment that shook the states. I ensure that in that empowerment, I give 800 swim machines to tell us to empower them to start doing their own trading. The state or your constituents? My constituents alone. My constituents alone. I gave 750 Gandhi machines. I gave about 400 generators with clippers for the barbers and the uh, air dryers for those uh, air dressers. I did a lot of things, water pump, and then 120 vehicles for commercial purposes. This shook the foundation of the state. In fact, people started talking to senators, they see what House of Red member is doing. It was because I have, I'm a man, I will, I'm a man of means before I came to power. I got to the peak of my career. I have over 200 staff in my private company before I came into government, which is still existing to tomorrow, by the grace of God. And sometimes, when, when I wanted to do that empowerment, I picked a lot of money from my office. I asked them to give me, and I bought those things. With the little I was able to get from the agencies, I combined it. When they wanted to compare me to other senators that they are not doing what I'm doing, including the neighboring state, Ekiti. They came and started talking that their senator is not doing what I'm I said, come. Most of this thing is my personal resources. Don't compare me to anybody, please. And I've been doing it even before I came to government. The two secondary school in my place have been paying their school fees more than 12, 15 years. And I don't have employed teacher because there's no teachers. I have 11 teachers that I'm paying their salaries for more than 10 years. If not, the school will have closed down. That's why the school, they were able to pass work anyhow. Because they have teachers in all subjects. And uh, till tomorrow, I'm going to pay their salaries. I said, this has been in my blood. I did a lot of developmental projects. Even the ones that are not even in my promises when I was campaigning. Like the CBT Center. Before, my children in the federal context, if they want to write jam, they have to travel to Quara State. They have to travel to so many states before they can write. Because there was no jump center. They go far. I say, okay. It was not in any budget. I talked to my office. I said, please, I will need so so amount. And they gave it to me. And I built 350 capacity as CBT center. And in fact, they were not to write exam that year. But when they see the quality and what we had did, the jam registrar accredited it, and they started writing. So, what are they? Uh, 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 Senator, didn't know I know he has been in the Senate. We helped him. 
to come to send it first time. Second time. We have helped us because it's our brother. It's my brother. I cannot dispute that. I was one of those people who also voted for him and asked my people to support him as well. So we have given him the power. We have tested his capability. We have seen his capability. We have seen what he, his deliverables. We have seen what he can do. And compared to me that is in the house of prayer. You've done more. I have done far more than him. So if I become governor, that's Kabagunu Jumu Federal Constituency is a Senator Dino Melayi Federal Constituency. That was a time. If it's even happening now, which I'm going to take care of now, you cannot cross from Ekenade to Ekiti. Ekenade is part of uh, Senator Dino's Federal Constituency. The road was impossible. I was when I went there to fix the road. People will sleep there seven days. They will not be able to pass. I fixed the road single-handedly. No, the portion, there is a portion now they are telling me now. I'll go there again. So that is what I'm known for. I'm known for, you see, people will judge the day of election, we show yeah. who is on ground. It's not, a, if I talk to you now, I'm just only making my, you don't even know my capacity. My capacity is, me, I believe, I don't believe in social media talking. It doesn't sound. I believe on, on let us go to the, to the ground. You think all he's doing is social media talk? No, I'm not talking. I'm not talking about him alone. Oh, great. Okay. I'm talking just generally now. But you sound but, confident. It does seem as though there are no considerations for you to step down, even though he said that both of you coming from the same place. Oku. Okay. If you say it, we, if it, you say it, we are talking, I agree. We are all talking. So he, all opposition can be. No, what he we said. Well, one of the things he, beyond the uh, possible alliance with uh, among opposition mm, yes. forces, he said. But both of you being from the same place is likely going to cause a problem. So the elders in the community are talking to both of you for one of you to step down. In fact, he believes that you will step down for him. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, the elders are talking to us. Yeah, we are discussing because it's my brother. I cannot dispute it. And then we look at who is more acceptable generally because people that are coming to vote. And the people that were assisted, they are not only in Kogi State. But so, so you're open to stepping down if... No, we are beyond, nobody can step down for anybody this time. You can only say, okay, maybe when we agree, you can say, okay, you're a supporter. Because you're already a candidate. But not stepping down. I mean, you, you, would, you, you would no longer want to push for your candidacy or push your supporters. But, but, you but, your but supporters uh, let me even tell you now. If you come to my fair consensi, PDP does not exist anymore. Most of the PDP people have the country, either ADC or APC. Just as a result of how the primary of PDP came out in the state. So you will see that even in the last election, when it seems that PDP was there, they had presidential candidates. PDP got only 2,000 votes in my local government. Why I had almost 12,000 votes. So, Honorable Abidjan. And the, the candidate for House of Rep for PDP also is from the so same local government. In one, in one very confident statement, would you say whether or not you are open to stepping down for anyone? The stage we are now. We have not reached any, any stage of anybody stepping down. No, no, I'm talking to you. I cannot even person. step down for anybody. That's the truth. Okay. Because the thing is this. If it's before primary, it's easier. After primary, you're a candidate of the party. Even though Dino, Senator Dino, if they ask him to step down, he will not, because his party will not agree with him. They will not say, ah, so you say don't have a party to have candidate in this election. So we can the arrangement can have can occur. I'm not disputing that. Maybe opposition can come out and say, okay, let's go this way at the end well, of the day. Especially because he's in a major opposition party, which seems to have better structure than your party. Well, is. Well, well, that's what I'm saying. If it is better structure, in Kogi, he is from Kogi West. I'm from Kogi West. Eh? Mm. We have three federal constituencies. ADC one, two. 
APC 1 1. PDP none. Assemblies. I won. ADC won. PDP didn't win anyone. So if the structure is there, why is it that PDP could not even win single one, even if it is assembly election? Me, I'm talking of Federal House of Reps and Titties. ADC won two. And we will have won three. Aye. It's just because what happened was that we didn't fit candidate in the third federal constituency because the candidate of the PDP was also an ADC person before. Just like you were an APC person. And it's interesting when I speak to you about matters of the APC, uh, matters of the ADC, but you largely refer to the APC. But beyond that, you say, and you are APC at heart. You've told me that a number of times. You say, <laughs> at heart. You've said, told me that a number of times as well. My leaders you, are you mostly say, there. Exactly. You have supporters from the APC. You say you're likely as to you return. Leader. You say you likely return to the APC. But then you say that if the people of Kogi vote uh, for the APC eh? again in the governorship election, if people of that they could die of hunger. If people of Kogi yes. vote for APC yes. in the governorship election, that they could die of hunger. In fact, very fast. So what would you do differently? Because you have said it, Senator Malaya has said it, and I've seen, I've heard some other candidates in this election say that there's hunger in the land. You as a candidate, if you become governor of Kogi State tomorrow, bearing in mind that there is hunger in the land, what would you do to address that hunger? Thank you so much. Um, first of all, let me tell you, on a free and fair election, APC candidate cannot even come second. On a free and fair election, who will do the votes? Is it people that are dying that this is the only opportunity to, they have to remove themselves from this penury and slavery and hunger and diseases? And no, no. So what I would do differently? It's what I'm doing currently in my federal constituency. In my federal constituency, I identified those who I need. I started with the widows. I have 8,869 widows, which I've been taking care of. That's why you see it difficult for anybody to displace me. Because they said, even before I came to government, I've been doing for them. Now that I'm in government, I'm seeing people doing more. I may as well give them food, which I'm going to do very soon also. I clothe them. And the empowerment, you see, they need little money to trade. Some people who are selling low cost beans, if he gets 100,000, it's a capital for him. The person selling fish, if he gets 300,000, it's a capital for her. You see, these are the little, little things that I'm doing that take away, that make them be and fit a bit fit, uh, comfortable. And what I did again for the farmers. When I came in 2019, because that was my business before I came to government, we export SSM seed in volume. So, and I see this thing comes from the farm. And I told my people, I gave them seedlings, I gave them chemical. I said they should plant it, and I will give you, I will bring the uptakers, which I did. They said, ah, this is a way of making money. And that is how some of them came out of poverty. So, these are the things you can do. For people to first of all, not to giving them money to be eating. Mm. What if the money finishes? That's the end. But if they know how to make the money themselves, they'll be able to sustain themselves. But another thing I will do differently is I will use the mineral resources in the state. We have 28 mineral resources that can turn the state around, that we don't even need to depend on federal allocation, which is what the state government is doing. They depend mainly on federal allocation. Once there is no allocation, the state suffers. And even the allocation itself, they have used it to borrow a lot of money. Now, they, the state is in serious debt. So, otherwise, why is it that local government workers cannot be paid? Another thing that I will do differently is I will ensure there is local government that autonomy in the state. What what about the federal government sent to them? We reach them. The only thing that will be different is any local government chairman who does not perform, who does not pay salary, and do the local 
uh, infrastructure that can be done within uh, within his own local government with the money available will be dealt with. Honorable Kogi State is a civil service state. That is what I don't I have, want to hear. Uh, no, no, I mean it is a civil service state. Well, we have 20 million resources. We have gold. Well, exactly. So that's my. We have plan. lithium. So that's where I'm going with the question because I know that Senator Dino Melaye talks. We have about limestone that makes Dangote that to be one of the richest. So Senator Melaye talks in about Africa. industrializing Kogi states. I'd like to hear your own idea of take how you can take Kogi state from a civil service state to perhaps an industrialized state, if that is your plan. Because you talk about the minerals in the state, which you believe can be harnessed to improve uh, the quality of living and perhaps development in the state. So what's your idea of taking Kogi state from a civil service state to whatever else you think would be better? First of all, before you can become industrialized, you don't indo I'm an economist by training. You don't industrialize in one day. Number one, we need to make sure we use these available mineral resources to get money. Then that's a jakuta. Still, if it can function, there's a certain number of uh, kilo uh, megawatt it can generate. We need to make sure we have stable electricity. Then when that one is done, the stable electricity, even then go to factory and this, it's okay for us to generate whatever we want for the state. Then it is the raw material that are available to us, like this mineral resources that we can use to industrialize. First thing first, make use of the mineral resources available to you, get the money, get electricity done. You don't need to depend on the national grid. Will you do PPP for the mineral resources? Yes. That's the best way to go. Why? Because, you see, government alone doing business does not help. If you do it, there will be support even within the government. The private sector will not like to lose money. I'm from private sector background. I know we are out to make profits. But government is not, the support is what you can get and go away with it. You know, you, you, you have talked about Ajokuta still. And now that you talk about PPP and the need to know, not being directly involved in business as a government. I know that Senator Milaye thinks that making Ajaokuta state-owned is the way to go. I don't know if that's the position you share, but I know that the National Assembly has had to sit through um, hearings on this Ajaokuta still matter, and at some point it seemed like there was no need to invest in more. Yeah, making it state-owned. Do you think that Ajaokuta still you would make it state-owned, or you would allow the federal government to finish up with it? Well, you do know, even the mineral resources we are talking about is under exclusive list. It's, uh, I mean, it's, it's under federal government control. It's only that we have to get arrangement with the federal government. Ajakuta, before it can be state-owned, then there's, the law has to be amended. No, no, I mean, but that, he said that he would push for that to happen. But yeah, I'm even if I would push for that, because if it is state, we know it's our own, we can bring in investors and do PPP that I'm talking about, and it will work. If you become governor of Kogi State, one thing you will inherit is a backlog of salaries, pensions, and gratuity. What are your plans to pay? And most importantly, so it doesn't sound as just a politician speaking, where would you get the funds to pay this backlog and how quickly, over what period of time, would you be able to do that? No, I cannot tell you the period of that, but what I would tell the, those people that have been owed backlog of salaries is we restructure how we pay them the back one, but from the day I take over, they will never be owed again. That one I can assure them. The one at the back, we can sit with them. How do we get it paid? How do we go over it? Because get to know from today, your salary is going to be full. But those ones that are not on our course, we look at where the money, the money went to. Who stole it? Why is it not paid? So we will look for a way to get the money so, 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 and pay. So will you probe this See, administration probing, if you become governor? Probing is not a... Uh, 
something that wants to concentrate on and start probing people, you should concentrate on how to move forward first. But there's no how you not look at what happened in the past, how things went wrong. If you see anybody who stole money, why wouldn't you collect the money back? You should be able to collect the money back. But for me to sit down and be doing probing of one person or the other, I don't that's think how you find out who's stolen the money, isn't it? Yeah, we, 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 it's not about it's not going probing. to fall on your lap. You have to. We, look we, we check it. about all the income that accrued to the state for the past eight years and how they were being spent. You understand? For example, there was a bill out of 50, I think, I think, 59.8 billion. So this money, the money was meant to pay the four months areas that uh, um, Governor Wada owed and take care of some projects. But when the money was paid, nothing was paid. Until recently when they said they were paid one month, that they even went and did big bo <laughs> board for, for that. They did pay. The money that is supposed to have collected eight years ago. You see, I don't know how our people reason sometimes. This money is not given to them by Abelo. It was a bill out that uh, Wada asked for. And it was given during below. What, what, what happened then was that they were thinking if they give to Wada, Wada will use it for election. So, and then they think when below comes, he will pay them. He collected this money, he didn't pay them. It's only about a month ago now, or less than a month, that I had that he paid one month out of the four month area that was supposed to have paid eight years ago. The, some of them even joined hand out of the little to get the big board that they have paid them one month. Abba. We should think and reason where. So how I will get funds yeah, is by looking for development partners. If you go to Cardano State, most of the things that was done there were not Nigerian money. It was from development partners that made all those roads and of overhead bridges you are seeing in Cardano State possible. I will for development partners to develop my state. Card Lokoja is the smallest state capital in Nigeria. It's supposed to look like when you go to UK, it looks like better than London even. So that everywhere you go, look fine. Even you as a governor, you'll be happy to stay. But you see, if the, your cell capital is not good, you'll always be in Abuja now. Because there's no light. There is no good environment. So the governor will always sit here in Abuja. But if the state capital is looking even beautiful more than Abuja, he will not be coming to Abuja once in a while and go. And I will use the available mineral resources in the state. I'll do PPP and make sure I get IGR yeah. that can even be more than the, what you get from the federal location. Very well then. Just before we go, you have raised quite a number of concerns from the attitude of the governor and uh, perhaps security related matters. But just ahead of the elections, are you worried or do you believe that the elections will be free, fair, credible and safe? Yes and no. Yes, uh, I believe the election will be free and fair. INEC is out to maintain their standard. INEC will not allow anybody to go and write figures the way they did in 2019. Whereby you just take a water register and write figure out and go out. I think we ensure it's one on one. You see. I'm also worried because the government of the day in the state, uh, what I even had now somewhere in the Kina, somewhere in Ampa, they are stock stockpiling arms. Stockpiling arms against innocent citizens. And I'm saying this now for the president to know that they need to go uh, other security agencies to comb all these areas. If I notice anyone from my place, I will ensure the person is arrested and then the arms have been taken away. Then I also believe God, uh, the president Bala Metinubu is a man of his word. He said the lesson is going to be fair and fair. And again, it's a fair man. If it's not a fair man, how will labor go to a state and ruin him? He will have also use instrumentality of power.
He wasn't. In, he state. wasn't in power. Though. But he's the governor of the state. <laughs> is a boy. He can do that because he's a peaceful man. Not because he's a my leader, but he's a peaceful man. Very well then, Honorable Leke Abidjidi, I'd like to thank you very much for your time on Political Paradigm. The elections are around the corner and I hope that um, <clears throat> you spread a message of peace among the people. The election is not supposed to be a do-or-die affair. The election is not supposed to be a do-or-die affair. See, I used to tell my people, or the, my co-candidates, let us go into this election with peace. If you are popular, so, you win. If you are not popular, should there be a peace you lose. Accord? They, they are definitely, you know, there will be now. There will but be a peace accord. Do you believe that so, if there is a peace so, accord, that it will Let me hard. even tell you, those who are scared, it's the government of the day in the state. So I'm asking, if there's a peace accord, do you believe that it will be honored? Or you think it's just a if it's not, to oh, I think the peace accord now, if it's not honored, I think uh, whoever is caught should be dead with a kind of the law. Thank you very much once again, Honorable Lake Kia Bejide, for your time. Thank you so much for having me. Well, that's Political Paradigm. I've been speaking with uh, ADC governorship candidates for the forthcoming Kogi election. Honorable Lake Kia who is also a two time member of the House of Representatives and Chairman House Committee on Customs. Two times. Two times. <laughs> And that's Political Paradigm. Thank you very much for your time as well. Remember to catch this episode and others on uh, YouTube by simply searching Political Paradigm or go to channelstv.com. I'm Terry Ikumi. Goodbye. <laughs>